All right, this demo is going to be on the conveyor link, uh, S5. It'll be on page 117. So let's go ahead and open that up here, page 117, and the conveyor link. Doesn't look like a very hard part. Um, yeah, it's a little bit tricky, actually. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that touch, bring that up here. So there's our part. So this one does not have a natural center point, unlike the first you know, ones we've been doing where it had a natural kind of in the middle of the paper. This one, not so much. Um, what it does have, though, is it does have this kind of pretty good horizontal line with the six inches between the vertical lines. So this part right here would be lower than the middle of our paper, obviously, at the center of the part would be, you know, somewhere in the ballpark of like where my mouse is right there. So we're going to drop that down just a little bit. All right. Um, by the way, um, the stuff that's here, just ignore wh whoever did this right here. Um, not, not what you want to do. Okay. So I'm going to do what you're going to do it my way. All right. So let's go ahead and start this off by getting this first center line going here. It says six inches, but obviously the, the number doesn't mean anything to us right now. All right. So like normal, we're going to have a 0.5 and a 0.7. 0.7 out of there, and let's use our 0.5. And instead of going to the middle here, we're going to drop this down right around here somewhere. Maybe a little, definitely lower than the middle. And create a nice horizontal line like that. Um, don't go too far down. You don't want to be down here anywhere because you'll run into the title block, which you don't really want to do. Um, but if you if you go too high, then you'll run out of room when you make this thing. So somewhere like right around there, maybe a quarter or a third of the way up. Okay. Now the middle of the paper would be right around here somewhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to go what would be our three and our three. Make that equal distant. And we're just going to make a center line like right there. Again, it's relative. The three means nothing to us, except that we're just going to make it equal. Okay, so we're off and running. Let's see what this thing looks like. Um, there's a 9 16 drill, which is a diameter of 9 16 which is just a little over a half of an inch. 8 16 is a half an inch, so just a little more than that. And then we have 13 16 radius, which is just a little over 3 quarters of an inch halfway across. So it's a little more than an inch and a half. So pretty good size arc right here. So let's go ahead and throw those in. So I'm going to start that way. And then we're going to connect them up with this straight line here. And the straight line, we're going to go all the way across. But we're not going to darken the whole thing, obviously. OK, so starting with the small circle. That's not very big. Same size. And then the larger circle, which is pretty good size. Something about maybe like that. Make sure this is the same size because you're going to have to connect them up. Nice and light here. Just make sure that everything's looking okay. This is this part, you know, some of you have to go back and you have to make tweaks to it. So it's really important to uh, give yourself some uh, leeway. So do everything really, really, really light. Okay. So we are off and started. Next. So we need this big center line right here. Um, the one that the three and seven eighths is pointing to. So it is a really big circle. So if you double that, that's almost eight inches in diameter. It's gigantic. Okay. But, um, and it's going to kind of, when it comes down, it's going to hit right about here on that center line. Now the middle is about here. So it's definitely going to come over to the left a little bit. So you need to be cognizant of that when we're putting this, this big circle in. So that's our first step. So, um, yeah, so um, the center of it is here, and then the that's our middle, so we're gonna, it's going to hit right around here. So <laughs> you have the circle that's centered here, and it's going to hit this on the radius. So it's going to be big. I'm going to move my paper over this way, just to get an idea of the way I'm going to do this. Now, this is going to go off my paper, but don't draw on your desk or anything like that. Yeah, here's the idea. Um, there's my, and so I'm going to make a circle. It's going to go off my table. I don't care. I'm just going to bring that around. I'm trying to get it so it's hitting that spot. It's going to go off the table, so it should be an equal distance spot here. This is a pretty good size arc. All right. Now, looking at that thing right there, and does that look the same as that? Just if you're not sure, just check yourself and go. 
uh, you know, I could go a little higher, like the top of my pencil right there. So I'm actually thinking that should be more, just a little bit higher coming around like that. Okay, I want to see that free circle, even though I know it goes off your paper. Okay. Step one. That's the big part. If you get that arc right, things are going to go a lot better for you. Okay, now we have a 15 degree angle and a 30 degree angle. So this is what I was talking about on the last project there when we had that 45. So if I was to flip my paper over, oops, that's not what I wanted. Like that. Okay, um, if I flip my paper over um, and I do a 90, so what would a 30 look like? Well, it would be a third of that and a third of that, right? So picture that distance. 15 would be half of that. So pretty small. So as we go after this thing, what we have is we have a 30 going from the vertical. That one won't be too bad. And then 15 from the horizontal. So if I was to take this and go straight up nice and light and divide this into three parts, this is the way I want you to do it. Three parts. That one, and I want it to be pretty equal. You have to mess around with that a little bit there, too. That actually looks pretty good. And then take that 30 and split it up right down the middle. That's what you need. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to do that again. Sorry. <laughs> I was doing that. Um, so I'm going to take this up. Sorry, I did that, and I didn't have my thing going. Um, I'm going to split this up into 30. And 60 and 90. And I'm going to take that 30 and then I'm going to split that up into 15. All right, and you can leave all those lines there, that's fine, okay? But the one I need is this one and I need this one. I don't really need this one and that one. I'm just going to lighten them just a little bit, but you can leave them there. I want to see that you know how to split those out. Okay, so with this center line, there's going to be a crisscross of it hitting that 15 and that 30. And that's where the circles are going to go. So what we have here is we have a one half. And that one half is the distance across the whole thing, which means that's a one half diameter circle. So it's pretty small. We're going to do this groove first, okay? They call them slots. You know, usually bolts fit in there and then things slide a little bit, okay? So half inch all the way across. Not very big. In fact, this right here is 916, so that's just, it's even smaller than that. So let's go back here. And using the intersections where these are, we're going to put that circle in. It should be just a little bit smaller than the hole. And then right there. Now let's go back and look at the part and make sure things are looking okay. Um, should that be hitting that line? Yeah, probably, huh? If that line comes across, that looks like it's hitting it. That's exactly what should be happening, right? So if that line, if this line right here came across, it would be running into our um, the one we just made. So that looks right. Okay, and then what happens is, see the, the arc? It's going to be tangent to the outside. That's actually going to be pretty easy for us, even though the first one was really hard. So then what you're going to do is you're just going to just keep parallel with this. And go to the outside and just kind of rotate your wrist and just kind of slide like that. That part's not very difficult. And then same thing here. Just kind of keep it parallel to the center line like that. And you've got your slot going on. If you want to, if this bothers your eyes, you can go back and just, you know, erase the inside part right there. But I don't really need you to do that. Okay, I like to see the free circles. Okay. And again, there's not going to be a straight line here anyway, so don't worry about that. Now, um... The uh, the larger circles, this three quarters radius is going to be pretty big, all right. So it's going to be three times bigger than this half inch diameter because double three quarters is an inch and a half. That's a half, so it's three times bigger. So this is a pretty big circle. So here's the way you're going to do it. Um, using this as a center point, three times bigger, so pr pretty good size circle there. Like that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to do the same thing. You're going to make this circle parallel and just like that. Same thing out here. You just run it parallel to the center line. So you're going to get something that looks like that. It's just a little bit darker so you can see it. 
It's looking a little, kind of a little muddy right now, but you'll see where it's going. All right. So now what we have is we have this one and a quarter radius. It's kind of floating in here. It's going to go straight a little bit, and then it's going to go into the radius. All right, there we go. Um, and so it's going to float in there. It's kind of like the ball in the corner thing. And then the same thing with this one. Let's do this one first, this one and a quarter radius, um, which is pretty big, two and a half. Pretty big, pretty big circle. So it's going to be tangent, tangent. And so it's going to be, again, pretty good sized circle. like that could even be a little bit bigger than that so um anyway it's going to tangent tangent i want to see the whole circle in there now the other one's a little smaller so the other one's three quarters which is an inch and a half which is the same size as this one right here so we can use that as kind of a kind of a helper so it's going to float in there and kind of wedge in the corner Tangent, tangent, and the same size as this. So it's going to hit you know, right around there somewhere. And, you know, just kind of self-evaluate. If it looks like it's a little small, make it a little bigger. I think my first one looked a little small. So I think that looks better. See how it's kind of, kind of wedging in the corner there? Um, I almost think that this one I made right here looks a little on the small side because that one should be one and a quarter radius, which is two and a half in diameter. So that's bigger than this one. So it should be kind of maybe a little bit bigger. So I don't really like the one, the one that I did. So I'm going to make that a little bigger. That's why we do these light. So again, still tangent, tangent, but just bigger. Now, this could be a little straight here before it goes into the curve, so don't make the circle so big that you don't get that. But it's hitting right about there and then going into the arc. Okay, something like that. There we go. Much better proportion. Okay, uh, the, the part is pretty much there. Um, the hard work's done. So now it's just center lines and darkening the lines like we've been doing on all of them. So let's do that. Um, we do have a center line issue that's a little different than what I've shown you before because we have a curved line here running into a straight line, and that's completely fine. So, for example, if you have an arc and it's going like this, and then you have a center line going into it and it's straight, you can have that center line do that. That's fine. So a, a center line can be on a curve, completely legal and all that stuff. So we are going to erase inside here and inside here and kind of clean out those areas where the center lines are going to be. We're not going to have center marks on these two guys like on the last ones. Okay, we're going to leave those alone on this one. And we're going to put our arced, sort of arced, T. Get it right in the middle there. And then our plus signs here. Now there's going to be a lot of action happening right in this area right here, so just be aware of that. Okay, and let's go. I'm going to tilt my paper a little bit, just kind of run that center line, long, short, long. I'm just going to stop that thing right about there. So I'm not going to quite get to the center mark. Same thing with this one. I'm going to start it right about there. I'm going to run this and just stop it yeah, right around there, close to the center mark, but not quite getting there. Let me tell you on this just a little bit. Okay, and then the normal stuff, you guys, the, the normal ones, this is an arc, so it's going to go all the way to the outside, all the way to the outside, because we're using it for the large arc right here. Same thing on this side, out, out, and out. And then you can run these guys together. And again, just leave a little gap there, because otherwise it gets kind of muddy in there. And let's see, and this would come down here like that, a little gap. So there should be a little plus sign in the gap. And then this one's going to run out right about there. So this one I'm going to want you to just kind of clean up a little bit and get rid of the excess like that. And then follow with your 0.7 pencil and it's time to start darkening. Follow your good lines. Sorry, broken lead there. Uh, I'm going to come around here like that. 
and then go into the curve, and then it goes straight, and then it goes into the curve. So make sure you get that straightness there, that can be a problem. It's going to come across one solid dark line. It's going to go into the arc. And it's going to go into the straight line. And it's going to go into the arc. If you want to make the arcs first, sometimes that's a little easier. This one's got arcs everywhere, though, so it's hard. And then, so like, this has an arc and this has an arc, so which one do you do first? It really doesn't matter. And just one solid dark line. Make sure you're getting tangent on the finishing parts right there that's hitting. Um, and then one solid dark line there. And one solid dark line there. Um, I really don't care about this extra stuff here, but if it's a little on the dark side, like, you know, you're starting to see it's starting to look a little, you know, kind of muddy, feel free to go in there and just kind of lighten it up a little bit. Some of you guys have heavier hands, and uh, you get that. Um, looks a little bit a little bit sloppy, so you want to just clean it up a little bit if you're like, getting a little heavy-handed. But like these light lines right here, you can leave them in there. I really want to just see those so I can see that you're using the free circle technique when you're building your geometry. So this one's going to be, well, we have an S5, right? So S5. And this is the, uh, the conveyor link. Just double check that and just make sure everything looks good. Okay, good, good. Just look at the darkened lines. And that is your part. So good luck on that. S5, the conveyor link.